everybody, Mark aka The Nerdy Punk back at the end today for a new video. I hope you all are doing well. As you can tell, I'm out on location today, uh, out and about, going to do some media hunting, as well as tonight I'm going to see the new Godzilla vs. Kong movie that just came out on Wednesday. Today is Thursday, April 1st, just came out last night, so I'm interested in checking that out. It'll be my first trip to the movies in, I believe, a month and a half, couple months. Uh, last time I went to the movies was when I went to see Wonder Woman 1984, which I filmed a video for on YouTube. So uh, I'm going to go out to the trifecta of places, uh, Disc Replay, which is where we are at right now, Best Buy, and Walmart. Uh, as you guys know, if you've been following the channel for a while, I usually like to go to Target as well, but unfortunately this town does not have a Target, so can't get to Target, so instead we'll have to deal with Best Buy and Walmart. Um, so if you guys are interested to see in what I pick up this video in terms of Blu-rays, maybe CDs as well, who knows, uh, definitely stay tuned throughout the video. If you just want to see my thoughts on Godzilla vs. Kong, skip to the end of this video and I'll be giving my review of that movie. So like I said, going to go out, look to see if we can find any Blu-rays, anything good, interesting. Um, I have a couple of goals for today. So my first goal is to find the Godzilla 4K. This was the Godzilla that came out in 2014 with Brian Cranston. Uh, I have not seen that, and I, I've heard really good things about the 4K transfer, so I want to pick up the 4K Blu-ray. I also, my other goal is to buy a 4K Blu-ray player. So I'm not promising that I'm going to buy one today, but that is one of my goals. I'm going to look through Walmart and Best Buy and see what they have in terms of uh, Blu-ray players. I know the Walmart, the last Walmart I went to, had the Sony UB700, I think is what it's called. Uh, that would be a good player for me because it's uh, relatively relatively cheap. It's like 150, 160 bucks, somewhere in that range, which is about what I'm looking to spend. Uh, my initial plan in terms of 4K was to get the PS5 and that be my 4K Blu-ray player. But if you, like me, have been trying to get a PS5, you know that the PS5 stock has been ridiculously low. Um, Sony really fucked up this situation. <laughs> and I don't think it entirely has to do with COVID. I think they just, they did not produce enough PS5s. And there's been this situation with the bots and all of that stuff. And it's just, it's just a mess, really, the PS5 situation. So my kind of current thought is, so I bought a 4K TV last summer. I've been watching it since last summer. I fucking love it. It's gorgeous. However, um, I don't have the ability to watch my 4Ks. And so I thought, why don't I just buy a budget level 4K Blu-ray player and uh, use that to watch my 4K movies. That way I can get the experience of 4K. I don't have to have the PS5 in terms of gaming right now. I'm perfectly fine with the graphics of the PS4. It looks fine. Um, I would like to see the PS5 improvements, but it's not the end of the world for me. I'm not like a huge gamer. I, I play mainly sports games, so it's not like a huge deal. So that's currently my plan. I don't know if I'll pick one up today, but if I do pick one up today, I'll definitely let you guys know. Maybe I'll film an unboxing video or something for that, because um, that would be interesting. All right, so let's hit disc replay, see if we can find anything cool in there. Okay guys, so I picked up several things from Disc Replay. Uh, I also picked up some Panda Express, some lovely teriyaki chicken. Uh, so of course, coming over to Terre Haute, I gotta get some good food. It's usually for me, it's either Popeyes or Panda. So we went with Panda today. So I'm gonna eat this. Uh, I'm gonna show you what I picked up at the, towards the end of this video before I get into the review of Godzilla vs. Kong. I'm currently at Best Buy, so immediately after I eat this, I'm going to head into Best Buy and check out what they have in terms of uh, Blu-rays and 4Ks, but also 4K Blu-ray players. So I'll check in with you guys at Best Buy.
Okay, guys, so a couple of unfortunate things about Best Buy. So if you could tell from my clips, uh, first of all, their uh, 4K Blu-ray player set selection, it was okay. Um, but unless their prices are mislabeled, um, the model that I was looking for is ridiculously overpriced in there. Uh, the UB700 by Sony, that's the model I'm looking at. They had it priced in there for $250. Um, you know, not, not a terrible price for a good 4K Blu-ray player. The problem is that exact same player, last I checked at Walmart, was only like $180. So, <laughs> don't know why I would ever buy it in Best Buy. <laughs> I should, I'm definitely going to head up to uh, Walmart and check to see if they still have it for that price. Um, other thing that was depressing about Best Buy today... I'm pretty sure that uh, something is going on with the movie selection at Best Buy. Um, there were two massive rows that were just empty. No Blu-rays at all. That is very, very worrisome because of the way that physical media has been going over the last few years. It's just getting fewer and fewer and fewer. Um, I'm very concerned about physical media selection in Best Buy and if that's going to become a thing of the past. Uh, let me let me know uh, if your guys' Best Buys are doing similar things, if you have these massive swaths of empty racks that used to have movies on them. Uh, I'm not, you know, 100% sure that they're completely getting, right, getting rid of those movies, but they had the... They didn't even have, like, a thing saying, oh, this movie would be here if we had it, you know? It just... It said something about uh, Pricer check thing. <laughs> I don't know, but it didn't like have like a title listed on the, the little tag thing. So that was definitely concerning. So we'll see what happens in the future in terms of physical media at Best Buy. Um, it seems to be the way of the world. Unfortunately, streaming is taking over. So anyway, I think we're going to go to Walmart and then I will show you everything that I picked up today. Okay, everybody, so I'm at the movie theater, getting ready to go see Godzilla vs. Kong. But before I do, let me show you everything that I picked up today on this media hunting uh, trip. So, first of all, I got the thing that I was really coming out for today, which is a 4K Blu-ray player. I got the Sony UB-PX700, which is what I wanted to get. Um, I've seen quite a few reviews on this player. I've heard it's a really good... Uh, budget player so I'm really excited to have this to finally be upgraded to 4k being able to say that feels incredible because it's been such a long time coming for me to finally be upgraded to 4k I've been buying 4k blu-rays uh, I think my first 4k blu-ray purchase was 2018 I want to say so you know I didn't like go crazy with them initially but uh, I think I have close to 50, maybe more, movies on 4K Blu-ray. So it's finally great to be able to get the full effects of 4K with the 4K Blu-ray player and the 4K television. So I'm really excited about this. I'm going to do an unboxing video for this. So uh, stay tuned for that. I'll probably post that tomorrow, actually, because I'm planning on filming it tomorrow. Um, so uh, look out for that, an unboxing video. I'm sure other people have done videos that probably do them better than I did, <laughs> but... Um, if you're interested in seeing this player, checking it out for yourself. It was $180 in Walmart, and like I said, it was $249 at Best Buy. Unless the price was mislabeled, that was the price. So why on earth would you ever buy it at Best Buy is beyond me. Uh, I like supporting stores like Best Buy, but not at that much of, a, of an increase in price. Like, at that point, you're just throwing away money. So... Anyway, picked up the 4K Blu-ray player. Now, the other goal of the day was to get Godzilla on 4K, and unfortunately that did not happen. Uh, I could not find it at Best Buy, and I could not find it at um, uh, Walmart. And now that I'm thinking about it, there was one place in Best Buy I forgot to check. I forgot to check the display up front, and it could have very well been there. So that was disappointing. I probably should have checked that, but I don't really have time to do it now. Um, my plan for that is to just order it off of either Amazon or eBay. 
I'm sure if I order off of Amazon, I will be able to get slip, the slip cover because the slip cover looks gorgeous on that Blu-ray and I really, really want it. So I will be disappointed if I don't get it, but I'm sure with it just coming out last week, I'll probably be able to get the slip cover if I place that order soon. So I'll probably order it online and get it in that way. But unfortunately did not be, uh, get that today. It was not in Walmart. But I did pick up several things on Blu-ray and one DVD at Disc Replay. So let me go through these titles here. I have seven titles that I picked up. I paid, I think, in total $32. So a pretty good deal for seven titles here. First thing I was able to pick up is Iron Man 2. A uh, really random title here, but uh, I basically got this for two bucks. That's kind of how I'm looking at it because... The price itself was $5.99, and then at Disc Replay, they have a deal where if you buy five titles, you get the sixth one for free. And so one of my $3.99 movies would have been free. So I'm basically saying, let's take that $3.99 off, and let's say I got this for 2 bucks. It's not the best Marvel movie, but I do have the urge to have as many Marvel Cinematic Universe movies on physical copy as possible. So I figure let's add this to the collection. I do also have some memories with it because this is the one of the only movies that my dad went with me to see in movie theaters when I was a kid. Uh, I think this came out 2010. Yes, 2010. So I would have been 14 years old. Um, so my dad took me out to see this. Great memories. He's not a movie fan like I am. So uh, having that memory is pretty special with that one, even though it's not the best movie. Uh, next one I picked up, let me actually show you these two together because of the same franchise. We have Resident Evil and Resident Evil Extinction. Uh, again, I've heard mixed reviews. I've never seen any of these films. I've never played the video games. Uh, I have friends who have played the, the video games, but I've never actually played them myself. And I've heard the movies are very different anyway. So... These just seem like fun popcorn movies, nothing super special, but, you know, for four bucks, I thought I would finally give them a chance. I have another one of these on Blu-ray, so I know this one's the first one. I'm going to start with this. I don't know where this falls in the series, but I'm excited to maybe watch these sometime in the near future. Next one I picked up here is Bruno, uh, Sasha and Baron Cohen. I've never seen this. Uh, I saw Borat. I loved the second Borat that came out last year. So his kind of comedy has always been hit and miss with me. Uh, this kind of like overly exaggerated, you know, physical, stupid comedy. Uh, it's really hit and miss with me, but I'm interested to check this out, see if I like it. Next one I picked up is Eight Mile, a steel book. Uh, this was only $4. I love this movie. I've been searching for a copy for this for years. For some reason, this is one movie that's very hard for me to find a good copy in cheap, uh, in good condition, cheap price, and this checked all the boxes. There are a few scratches on the uh, Steelbook, but for the most part, a Steelbook for $4 of a really good movie, I'm going to take that every time. So, 8 Mile, excellent movie. This one, I've been, it's another title that has kind of eluded me over time. I've always found cheap titles of this, but they've never been in good condition. And this is decent condition, $4, so I finally picked it up. This is Rosewater, written and directed from Jon Stewart. And Jon Stewart, of course, used to have the show, Daily Show with Jon Stewart. I used to watch him every night. I love him as a person. I love his comedy. And I'm really interested to see this film. He also, I think he wrote or produced, I can't remember if he wrote it or not. He definitely produced a movie that came out last year that I haven't seen either. But this was his directorial debut. Um, it's got a really interesting synopsis, kind of a political drama. Uh, so I'm really interested in checking this one out as well. I've never seen this. And then, last title that I picked up. This is the only DVD. I very rarely buy DVDs anymore. But I made the exception for this. This is Watchmen, the limited series from HBO. came out last year. This was only $8. Uh, 
And it does bug me that this is not a Blu-ray because I've become a Blu-ray snob. I don't really watch DVDs anymore except for titles that were never released on Blu-ray. Uh, but this, I made the exception because it was a good price and I've been really wanting to see this. I love the movie Watchmen. And from what I've heard, this takes place in the same universe. It's just different characters. And I've always been fascinated by the concept of alternate history, and that's what the Watchmen universe is. Um, I've been watching, I've been binge-watching the show Man in the High Castle on Amazon Prime as of late, and that's an excellent alternate history. And I hope this will be very similar. I heard amazing things about this last year. Uh, the movie Watchmen is one of my favorite comic book movies of all time, and I believe it's my favorite Zack Snyder movie. So I'm really interested to see what direction they take this in, because what I've heard, it's very different from the movie. So really interested in this. I can't wait to check it out. I made the uh, exception by picking it up on Blu-ray because it was so cheap. And let's see if there's anything in here. Looks like there's a little episode guide in here along with the discs. So yeah, I'll give this a watch. Maybe I'll do a review of some sort on this, because I am really excited about this. So, Watchmen. Okay, that's the titles I picked up at Disc Replay. I uh, hope you enjoyed the media hunting portion of this video. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to head into the movie theater. I'm going to watch Godzilla vs. Kong. And then I'm going to come back out here when it's much darker outside and give you all my thoughts on the movie. Okay, guys, so I just got out of seeing Kong, or sorry, not Kong, Godzilla vs. Kong. Um, let me get the title right here. So, I, uh, I really enjoyed this movie. I can't say it was flawless, because it absolutely was not. Uh, there were a lot of things that I could nitpick about. Uh, some things that I think are pretty big flaws with the movie. However, I think that doesn't take away from it being an enjoyable experience. And... I don't think anybody's going to go into this movie expecting to see the best movie they've ever seen. Um, and so if you go into it with realistic expectations, I think you're going to have a really good time. Um, the Nobody really watches a Godzilla movie or a King Kong movie for the human characters, really. You watch it for Godzilla, you watch it for King Kong. Um, the human characters are in the background. And... That's exactly how they treated this movie. Um, I'd say maybe less than a third of the film is like just character scenes with the human characters. The vast majority of the film, one of the monsters is in it, and there's some type of fight scene in a good portion of this movie, which is the good part about it. Like I said... Uh, most of the characters in this movie just feel throwaway. They feel disposable. They're not interesting. There's nothing about them that's interesting. You don't learn hardly anything about these characters. Um, There's some characters that are there for comic relief, and some of the jokes land. Some of them do not. So, is it the best script I've ever uh, I've ever seen in a movie? No, not by a long shot. Uh, there could be a lot of improvement with the story to this film. But it was enjoyable, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, it was great, great action sequences. Um, I loved the, the set design, uh, the design of the monsters, obviously. I love also how they've approached these more recent Godzilla films as kind of treating Godzilla and Kong as animals, because that's what they are. They're all animals. And... Instead of, like, giving them some sort of human motivations, they just say, okay, if we had animals that were actually, you know, this size, could actually do all this stuff, how would they act? And that's pretty much how the Godzilla and Kong act during this film. Uh, the best part of the movie, aside from Godzilla and Kong fighting, which is definitely the best part of the movie, <laughs> but the second best part of the movie is one of the characters, there's a little girl who's deaf, and she can communicate with Kong. And there's a really great development of their relationship. I wish they would have focused more on that because I think she's the most interesting character in the film by far. Uh, unfortunately, you don't get as much as I would like, but you still get a good 
good portion of the film with her in it. And so I found that the most enjoyable out of all the human characters. Like I said, the other human characters, there's nobody really to root for because you don't really care about any of them. So I think uh, I would give this film a 3 to 3.5, <laughs> somewhere in between, out of 5. Uh, I think this is slightly above average. I think it's a movie I'll probably buy on 4K. I have a feeling it will look gorgeous in 4K whenever it comes out on the home media formats. Um, again, I think it's a movie you watch for fun. You don't really expect to read a whole lot into it. You just enjoy two monsters fighting it out on the big screen. So, that's my thoughts on Godzilla vs. Kong. If you've seen the film, let me know in the description, or sorry, in the comments, <laughs> your thoughts on the film. Uh, did you watch it in theaters, or are you planning on watching it on HBO Max? I know this is one of the films that is simultaneously releasing in theaters as well as on the streaming services. So I'm interested to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, other than that, great day out today. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and I will uh, see you guys later. Bye.